Hello, welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to look at the relationship between the torque and the angle of twist. Now, we know that torque simply means there is a twist in the member, and the moment there is a twist, meaning there is an angle at which we are twisting the member. So, let's look at a formula or a relation that is going to combine the torque that we are using to twist the member and the angle produced, angle of twist. So if I'm given the angle of twist or twist, I should have an idea of the torsion that caused that deformation. Are we okay? So straight away, we are going to deduce that formula. We can write it straightforward, but it is best we derive the equation. So this is just a cross section of a member that I'm going to draw. So this is the surface. So this is from a member like this. Remember, we are saying in this analysis, we are going to consider all our members to be circular members. So this is the bar. And we are applying a torque T to twist the member at an angle theta. So we are drawing the cross section surface from the first diagram. So this is the first diagram. We can make analysis. Now we want to understand. So we have to take just a small portion of the surface and make understand, derive an understanding from it. So this is a small portion we are taking. Please pay attention. So if we are taking a small portion, meaning whatever is happening in the small portion, can be integrated to the larger scale. Do you understand? So if we are saying this is just a small portion and from the middle of the bar, we are going to have a radius to that section we are considering. So this is a radius R. And we are taking out of the radius R, we are taking just a small radius, the R, and we are also taking a small area called the A. Now, we know that shear stress is just the shear force over the shear area. Is that true? Yes. Then that means we are going to say, even looking at this small portion we are taking, it is also undergoing some shear stress. Look at this. It is undergoing some shear stress. So the shear stress that this small portion is undergoing is still given by the formula the shear force over that area, that small area that we are considering. Therefore, we can say that the shear force that is causing a shear in that small portion we are taking is going to be the shear multiplying the area. But what do we see? We are saying the shear is constant times the area. We didn't consider the whole area of the bar. We just considered a small portion, and that is going to be what? the da like this now what we have to also understand is that torsion is a moment do you understand it is a moment that is what causing the bar to twist about a particular axis and what is moment moment is just the force multiplying with the perpendicular distance so the same approach if we are saying torsion is a moment, then the torsion, when we consider this small area two, we are going to consider a small moment. So the small moment, the M, is going to be the force. Since torsion is a moment, a moment is force multiplied by the distance, meaning the force we saw is the shear multiplying the A, multiplying the distance. And the perpendicular distance here is the radius r. Do we get that? Now we have the moment expression this way. We consider just a small portion. So we have this equation. We can further deduce this equation as the m, which is the small moment. We already know the formula shear from the first episode that 
for torsion, the shear stress is going to be gr theta on what? Our L. So we can put that one in the equation, and this is what we are going to get. So this is going to give us theta, our R is going to be squared. And we still have dA on the length. So this is the moment equation. So now we know the moment for just a simple or a torsion area. Can we do analysis and make or derive the moment for the entire cross section surface up to this point? What can we do? We can apply integration, right? So let's apply the integration rule. So total moment. The total moment is going to be equal to the total what? Torque. And we saw that the total moment is going to be what? T. So can we say the T is going to be integral of the total moment from a point zero to the entire radius of the shape. And this is what we are having. Let me write the equation. So R squared dA on our length. Do we get that? So here, what do we see? We can see that con some constants are here. This is the shear modulus. It is a constant. So we can bring it out. The angle of twist is also a constant. It can come out. The length of the bar is also a constant, which can come out. And what are we left with? We have integral from 0 to r of what? The radius square dA. Now, when you watch the episode for polar moment of inertia, this expression, integral 0 to r of r squared dA is actually what we call the polar moment of what? Inertia, which is g. So this is also called polar moment of inertia, which is the ability of what? The bar to resist twisting. Remember, as you are twisting the bar, it will resist it. So that ability to resist that twisting is what we call the polar moment of what? Inertia. So it is denoted by J. So this whole part now becomes the torsion will be equal to this will be on L. So this is the relation of what? Torsion. So in the first episode, we talked about the shear stress, the shear strain. We didn't see the effect of what? The torsion. So if you want to analyze the effect of the torsion on the member, this is the general equation. Or this is the equation where you can use to derive. Now, we can see some constants over here. The, the G, which is the modulus, is a constant. The J, which is polar moment of inertia, is also a constant. The L, which is the length of the bar, can what, vary or can be what? A constant. So, I told you we have a general formula. Now, we've seen that our torsion is equal to, we have that on L as our torsional equation. You should never forget this as long as you are not done with the program. So, this is the torsion equation. We can make some analysis here. Please watch. I'm going to make some equations out of this. So if I divide the T but a certain J, can I say it's equal to this on L, right? This is true because I just divided true by what the J. When you look at this part, what do you see? This part is also equal to Dividing the shear stress formula by the radius because the shear stress is given us we have R on the length, 
right. So if I divide this by R, where this will cancel out this, I'm getting this part. So this is just equal to that. So this relation that you are seeing is what I call, or what is called the general torsion equation, this part. It can solve almost every torsional problem. So the general torsion equation. Because from here, if you want to know the relation of torque and shear stress, you can relate them, right? If you want to know the relation between the angle of twist and shear, you can derive it from there. So let's derive some simple formulas. We can, first we know that shear is equal to, so let me write it, this is on L. What if I want to write a different formula for the shear? Assuming in the question I'm not giving all these parameters, then from the general formula, I can say that shear is also equal to a certain torque multiplying the radius on G, right? Because I can relate this first part to this part to derive this formula. And I can also get angle of twist theta. I can relate it to either the right hand side or the left hand side, whatever you want to relate can be possible. So if I'm relating theta, so I can also get to the left hand side, I can get TL on, we have GG this way. Do you see that? Or you can also relate it to the right hand side to get a different formula. So the idea is to have the general formula in your head. That will be necessary. Now we are not talking about the J because I've already made an episode on the polar moment of inertia for circular bars or solid shaft and hollow shaft. In our analysis, I have already told you that all what we are going to consider are what? Circular section or circular cross sections. So for the J, if we are looking at a solid section where there is no cut through or there's no hole with a radius R, then our G is going to be pi, or let me say this is just the diameter. We are interested in the diameter, which is going to be pi D4 on 32. Are we okay? So bringing this G into the equation, we are going to have our shear to be this is going to combine as 16 t on pi d q so you can also put this formula down or just solve it find the value of the j and bring it into the equation any of them will work also for follow sections where there is a cut through we've already seen that we are also going to have the g as pi the big d or minus the small d for everything on what 32 so this is also going to help us derive our polar moment of inertia the ability of the bar to resist the twisting whatever twisting you are bringing into the member so please pay attention to the general form and once you know the general torsion equation you write it down you look at the parameters you just relate whatever you are to find with any of them and trust me it's going to work so thank you for watching this episode in the next episode we are going to solve a practical example so that we can relate the general formula for you to see how best this is please subscribe to the channel see you